treatment works. We like to say dead people don't recover. Opioid addiction is best understood as a brain disorder uh, and an illness that can be treated as a medical problem. Just like other chronic diseases, you can't cure it like you would cure pneumonia. And so the best approach in treating opiate addiction is like treating chronic diseases, where you're constantly making an effort to try to abstain or reduce the drug use um, and maintain that success that you've had. Some of the common concerns that come up when people are recommended medication treatment, like buprenorphine or methadone, is that they are opioid medications. So the question is, are we replacing one addiction for the other? If you apply the three C's of addiction, it becomes very clear that taking buprenorphine or methadone for treatment leads to better control, reduction in cravings, and improving your life. But with heroin or fentanyl, that's the exact opposite is true. So even though these medications are opioids and they can cause physiologic dependence, meaning it can cause tolerance or if you suddenly stop it, you can have withdrawal symptoms. Addiction is a behavioral syndrome, not simply physiologic dependence. And so uh, the concern that people have whether it's replacing one addiction for the other is not true. The basic approach we take in treating opioid addiction is to utilize the three legs of treatment. And those three legs are first, medication treatment if they're available. Second, some kind of counseling to teach about how to maintain your recovery. And then third, to create a recovery-oriented environment. When it comes to medications, we have basically three choices, buprenorphine, methadone, or naltrexone. The three work somewhat differently. Buprenorphine is the one that we use most commonly. It's a medication that helps to reduce the cravings people have for opioids. And also, taking buprenorphine blocks you from experiencing the effects of heroin or fentanyl. The next leg in addiction treatment is to offer counseling. We want to teach patients about how to prevent relapse and how to deal with cravings when they emerge. Most patients take many tries before they're able to successfully maintain their recovery. It's usually not the first time they try. And then finally, the third leg is to create a recovery-supportive and recovery-oriented social and physical environment. I think it would be apparent that if somebody's trying to not drink alcohol, hanging out at the bar is probably the wrong place to be. So similarly, people in recovery from opioid addiction have to create a new social network of individuals who are not using opioids. It may seem simple, but it's actually quite difficult. For somebody who's now learning to be in recovery, creating an entire new social network of people who are not using can actually be difficult, but that's exactly why it's so important. In some parts of the country, there's a very high likelihood that you're using something called fentanyl and not heroin. And you may actually not know which substance you're using. Sometimes it's both, sometimes it's just one or the other. So it's really important that you talk to your doctor about your concerns. And if you know that you're using fentanyl, it's very important that your doctor knows about it. Heroin withdrawal can last a short period of time, intense, but uh, you can start buprenorphine after let's say 10 or 12 hours after stopping heroin, but that may not be true for fentanyl. You may have to wait much, much longer. And so again, it's very important for you to talk to your doctor. For example, you may need to be tested to see what is it that you may be taking because you may never know what is it that you're ingesting. The study that really highlighted the difference between maintenance treatment of buprenorphine versus short-term treatment or detoxification is, is a study that came out of Europe. Some people took buprenorphine for a whole year, on the others are simply detoxed off buprenorphine very quickly. After one year, about 80% of the people in the buprenorphine maintenance group stayed in treatment and were doing actually really well. But people in the detox group, they're all gone by the first one or two months. And by the end of the year, a quarter of them had already died. 
We always recommend medication treatment to our patients because they're the best ways to address opioid addiction, to prevent overdoses, to prevent the use of illicit opioids. But at the end of the day, we always honor patient autonomy and patient preference. If somebody doesn't want to try medications, we honor that. We'll help our patients however we can, even if the choice for them is to pursue drug-free options. Now, we always hope that patients you know, accept treat medication treatment, but we have plenty of patients who refuse. It doesn't mean we refuse treatment for those patients. We will still be there for you and will help you along your recovery. So here at Mass General Brigham, we are very committed to identifying innovative uh, therapies so that we can improve the outcomes that patients experience. Even though current therapies do work, we can actually do better. We need to do better. And so for example, we're doing studies to examine if cannabidiol might be helpful for opioid addiction using psychedelics like psilocybin. We, we have a trial proposed for using ketamine. We also want to explore more about the impact of peer recovery coaching on impacting outcomes. Uh, finally, looking at digital therapeutics or digital phenotyping. So we're, we're always looking for innovative ways to help our patients so that we can move this field forward. So where can you go to get more information or resources related to opioid addiction treatment? The first place would be the Center for Disease Control or CDC website. Another place would be the National Institute of Health. Uh, specifically the website for the National Institute on Drug Abuse, or NIDA. At the local level, uh, your state department of public health or related agency should have a division that addresses addiction services in the state, uh, and they should be able to provide additional resources to your local area.